Hello, everybody. Welcome to our AEC Senior Executive Briefing for April 8th, 2021. You know, I, I think everybody would agree that, that some component, uh, we just don't know how much, but some component of this virtual interaction is here to stay, okay? That, that, that the virtual interviews aren't just going to magically go away, uh, you know, once the last person gets their vaccine or once the mask mandates uh, are, are gone away. So with that, you know, virtual interaction, virtual engagement with your audience, like I said earlier, we're getting more and more questions about that. Is there training available? Is there coaching available? Uh, and, and I thought it was a great idea to have Dean Hires uh, on the show today. So Dean is the founding principal with the presentation coaching firm, Sage Presence. Dean co-authored winning AEC interviews uh, in 2017 and had a 2020 release winning virtual AEC interviews, which couldn't be more uh, relevant. Uh, it's based on coaching nearly $6 billion in winning AEC project pitches, including U.S. Bank Stadium and Zuckerberg Hospital. Dean draws on a background that's stranger than fiction uh, in that he's uh, got experience directing film, teaching acting, uh, to covert agents of all things. We'll have to talk about that. Uh, coaching courtroom presence to litigators, uh, plus two decades of winning AEC interviews. So there's nobody better to talk about uh, this stuff than with, with Dean. Dean, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Hey, it is great to be here. And it's great to be here technically. One of the things that plays into presence as we were talking is you discover how many things can go wrong just before you're about to be on a webinar. And I just had a total computer meltdown and got to come in with you through the phone. And what's so great to me is being able to manage presence when your head gets scattered, when things go wrong, and when you need to influence people. But hey, it is so great to be here. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, Dean, tell me a little about, yeah, like, what is screen presence? And, and how do you get it? Are you born with it? Do you create it? What, uh, tell us a little bit about it. I'm sure everyone's born with it and everyone can create it and everyone can evolve. Let, let's, let's think about it this way. Your story is whatever you're saying. Mm -hmm. So therefore, your presence has to be what you seem like. It is a really soft, squishy thing. How you seem. And keep in mind, the human brain is 90% in the background behind the curtain uh, of the subconscious processing. Only 10% of your mind is your conscience or your conscious. And so you're running the numbers on body language all the time and tracking people on the basis of presence. So let me make this example of the point, tie this to sales. But when I, I've been married for 32 years and the woman that I married, I picked to marry before I'd spoken to her. We had a connection. It was a vibe thing. And I'm like, that's, that's the one. And, you know, fortunately, that story worked out quite marvelously. But we hadn't spoken, but maybe we had. Because body language talks, it rounds up all the other factors or rounds them down. And we're processing what our body is saying and creating chemistry to pick someone you want to go down a path with. Mm. How is that not what's going on in sales, aside from the number and your design ideas and your price and your engineering solutions? How is Vibe not rounding that up to communicate to your prospects that you're the one they want to work with? So presence is a little bit elusive, but it has it's, it's essentially the, what emotions are shining through your body language to show someone else what you're like. Mm. Yeah. OK. OK. I think I, I think I get that. Uh, let's talk a little bit about what, what's the difference in terms of your strategy for a, for a virtual interview versus an in-person interview? What, what, what's different here? Obviously, the obvious. Tremendous amount is going to be the same. I think one of the main differences comes from talking to selection committees. We, we asked them, what are you looking for? And we did a panel webinar with a number of people who'd made selections virtually. And they all had a million thousand things to say, but the thing they all said is they're looking for synergy. They're looking for, they didn't say presence, but they're looking for presence and synergy. The difference between those two is I have my presence, the team together creates synergy, and are we seeing it? 
And what's really good news hidden in some very bad news is the virtual platform is about the worst place to try to show team synergy. We're all separated or some of us are together and some are separated. How do we read each other? We've, we've gone from a three-dimensional world where that subconscious I was talking about is processing a 3D experience to a two-dimensional experience that cuts cameras like a TV show. And suddenly we're starved back there on that information. So what you're strategizing on top of all the other things that you're otherwise strategizing is how do we give them an experience of us? Because what Carl was talking about, my favorite part, there's a lot that the two of you talked that was very powerful, but the part that really you know, got my attention was personal branding. People are actually saying that. What's my personal brand? So corporate brands, firm brands are degrading because we no longer have the, the office, the big logo behind the reception desk who greets you and takes you to a beautiful conference room. We have me and my dining room. We have you wherever you are. And now your firm is relying on you to create the presence of the organization. So you have to strategize team synergy, personal presence, and how you show them what they can't quite experience the way they could in the 3D world. Mm -hmm. So big, that's the biggest. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I saw when I was looking through the book, which I thought was fascinating, the virtual that you see in views, I saw something that the dirt model, could you, could you talk a little bit about what the dirt model is and, and how, it, uh, how you adapt an audience? What, what's going on there? So DIRT stands for driver, inspirer, relator, and thinker, the four basic personality types as we name them. So we study DISC and insights and social styles and the various um, four personality models. And the question was, how do we spot different personalities while we're presenting? And, and what do we do to address them? How do we change to modify ourselves? And so we renamed them based on what they do. Drivers drive, inspires are, you know, they're really expressive. I'm, I'm an inspired personality. Relators are people people. They're relating. They're always looking at teams and politics and thinkers are in the facts and the details and in the logic. And so what you want to do is figure out how you can spot and then adapt to those four, four personality types. We're strategizing in interviews by just simply asking questions. Yeah. What are they like? And we'll start piecing together a map of our selection committee, we call it digging the dirt on the selection committee. Who's whom, who's got the power, what are the personalities like, and how will that inform the way we go about the interview? And so that's what the dirt model represents. Okay, great. What, how do I differentiate my firm in a, in a, in a virtual environment? What, what are the things I can do to really stand up? Keeping in mind what you just said, and that, that was, I thought that was a really good point about personal brands are starting to, to kind of trump firm brands a little bit. Well, let me combine a couple of things that we've been in. Let me talk about some of the aspects of presence that you can actually control. One of the key ingredients, and, and let's see, let me fly the helicopter a little higher. The answer to the question that I want to break down a little more detail is you can have more presence and differentiate by having more presence, you can differentiate by showing more synergy, and you can differentiate by adapting better to the behavior styles, the communication styles of the selection committee, even if it's estimated guessing, you're getting closer to the way they communicate. Mm -hmm. So amidst the array of all the other things you differentiate, if I can adapt, if I can bring more presence, and I can show team synergy. So if it serves your audience, let me break those three down. Does that sound good? Yeah. So Connection is normally formed through eye contact. So a simple tip that you want to master is living and building the relationship with the lens instead of the screen. Mm -hmm. So for those of you, if you're seeing me full screen, I'm not looking at the screen. I'm looking at a very small green dot, technically a little black dot next to a green dot. Because look at the difference when I look at you. This is, to me, this is looking at you. I'm making eye contact with Greg, and yet this is what feels like it. So you have to start, which starves that part of your brain that's looking for the nuances of body language, you want feedback, but you have to build a relationship here. So if presence were two things, one of them is simulating eye contact for screen presence. And I'm gonna do that here, even when I'm listening, 
lots of time with the lens instead of lots of time with the screen. The second part is the emotional vibe because what body language is, is expressions triggered by feelings. So for example, when I get really scared, I, I have a thought that, oh no, I'm scared, something bad is happening, or I'm, I'm failing. That creates an emotional experience of dread and, and fear. And then I get this little voice tell, which is a little bit of a quiver in my voice. And that is a response to my heart. So what we want to do is think about what we're feeling and feel the way we should feel so that our presence shows through the lens. So that's the simple solution to presence is direct eye contact and feeling right. Makes sense so far. You bet. So feeling right is a really interesting thing. Happy cells. So I'm not a happy person all day long, but my job is to be happy here because this is bringing a positive emotional experience. But what we usually work with is appreciation. That's the, um, it's more malleable. So if I'm appreciating you, I'm caring about you through the lens. And so right now I'm caring about you specifically and your audience, all who are in that one eyeball. Mm-hmm. Now, now what- Dean, I have a quick question because this might actually yeah. relate to what you just said. A uh, question from the mm-hmm. audience. Do you normally stand during presentations uh, or is that just related to the computer issue? Is that a, that's, there's a real strategy to that, I would assume, right? The strategy is simple. Um, well, actually, let me start with the even simpler part. I go by the same rules as if I were alive. If I would stand to present to you live, I'm going to stand here. This, I feel like I'm a presenter of sorts. So I'm standing. So nine, I don't know, maybe more like 19 out of 20 interviews we have stood because standing, it gives me more energy. I can create a more 3D experience of the space in this 2D world. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to try to give back a little bit more of what this platform took away. I show more authority. I pay more respect. So I stand a lot whenever I would normally. That's really that interesting. Makes, it makes a lot of sense. The exception would be, what if you're really trying to create a, we're working with you feeling. We had an interview where it really seemed to be about creating a working session feel. And we chose to sit down. And it worked, but it's the only time I've ever done it. I, I normally pr- prefer standing. But, but if you think about how vibe plays in, if so I'm caring about you. I'm appreciating you. You've got challenges that you face. I've got theoretically solutions for you. Now watch my vibe if I turn it off. Now there's nothing wrong with steely confidence. When heart is down, direct eye contact becomes steely confidence, which is a really good thing, but you can warm it up. So see my, hear my voice change. So what I want to do is appreciate you. And if I can do that, I've got presence. Let me just pause there. Making sense? Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes a lot of sense.